We all have a layer of body fat sitting on top of our muscles, and by stripping away most of that body fat, you start to see things like more muscle definition, striations, and veins. And even though it's difficult to get to really low levels of body fat like 12%, 10%, and 8%, it's definitely possible to achieve naturally. So in today's video, I wanna go over the exact steps that you need to take to get to those really low levels of body fat. Now first you have to ask yourself if this is really something that you even want to do because there are some drawbacks to having a really low body fat percentage. Some of these include hunger, a lack of energy, low libido, lightheadedness, mood swings, and always feeling cold. So I'm sure it's no surprise when I say that staying under 8% body fat is typically unsustainable over a long period of time, especially if you're doing it naturally. So yes, you can get to those really low levels of body fat for a certain day where you have an event like a bodybuilding competition, a photo shoot, a wedding, or whatever. But the chance of maintaining such a low body fat percentage every day over time is slim, especially while still being able to feel good. And that's just the truth. But regardless, many of you may just wanna get as lean as possible for that certain event, and then afterwards bring your body fat percentage back up a little so you can still feel nice and healthy while also looking defined and aesthetic. So step number one is to create specifically a small calorie deficit. Keep in mind, if you're overweight or obese and you currently just wanna lose as much body fat as possible in the shortest amount of time, there are more aggressive fat loss options available for you, but you're not ready just yet to be thinking about getting down to a single digit body fat percentage. If you wanna to get to a really low body fat percentage, you should already be somewhat lean and you should plan on it taking a good amount of time, anywhere from six weeks to months, depending on how lean you are right now when starting out. Now, the reason why you wanna create a small deficit is because when you're already lean and you're in a calorie deficit, your body activates certain mechanisms that lower energy expenditure to a greater extent than someone that has a lot of fat to lose. When you already have a relatively low body fat percentage, a negative energy balance causes your thyroid hormone, growth hormone, insulin, insulin-like growth factor one or IGF-1, and testosterone to all drop rather quickly. Instead of these anabolic hormones that help you build muscle and burn fat, your body will produce more adrenaline, noradrenaline, and cortisol. As a result, you'll be more prone to muscle loss, which is why it's important to maintain only a slight calorie deficit. This is all supported by research. For example, one study compared the difference between three months of dieting with a 25% calorie deficit or a very low calorie diet of only 890 calories per day. At the end of the study, even though the very low calorie diet group lost more weight, the ratio of muscle to fat loss was much higher. That's why you wanna take a slower dieting approach, especially as you lose more and more body fat. A good guideline is to go for a 20% calorie deficit if you're between 12 and 14% body fat right now, a 10% calorie deficit if you're between 10 and 12% body fat, and a 5% calorie deficit if you're between 8 and 10% body fat. To figure out approximately how much body fat you have on your body right now, you can get a DEXA scan, but it's time consuming and it costs money. So a surprisingly accurate way that you can guesstimate your body fat is by looking in the mirror and comparing your level of body fat to the picture that you see on the screen right now. Whichever figure looks most like you, that shows you your approximate body fat percentage. The next step is to cycle your calories, and there are a couple reasons for doing this. First, since you'll be dieting for some time, you should keep in mind that hunger is the primary reason that diets fail. That's why it's important to optimize your diet and lifestyle for controlling hunger. And one way you can do that is by cycling your calories. This means consuming more calories on some days and fewer on others. Let's say for example that you need to eat a total of 12,000 calories per week to lose fat, which is about 1,715 calories per day. While you could eat 1,715 calories every day and reach 12,000 calories by the end of the week, you could instead have two lower calorie days and five higher calorie days each week. An example would be to consume 1,200 calories on Monday and Thursday, which would save you the calories for the rest of the week, allowing you to have 1,920 calories on the other days. And you can set this up in a way that suits your preferences. So you can do three, four, or even five lower calorie days to bank a lot more calories for the other days of the week. According to the evidence, cycling your calories like this can improve diet adherence, diet satisfaction, and weight loss compared to continuous calorie restriction. Now, to make calorie cycling work, you need to keep a couple important things in mind. First, ensure that you hit your protein target every day of the week. So get at least 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight daily, which is about 0.73 grams of protein per pound of body weight. The second point is that since your protein intake will remain the same, 
you'll obviously need to be reducing either carbohydrates or fats or a combination of both to lower your calories on your lower calorie days. And third, you'll want to schedule your low calorie days on your rest days. This is because protein synthesis is what leads to muscle growth and even muscle maintenance. And protein synthesis will be lower on the days that you eat less calories, especially if you're considered advanced. So save the higher calorie days for your workout sessions. Keep in mind, even though you are having higher calorie days by cycling your calories, you're balancing them out with the lower calorie days. These are not cheat days or full out refeeds. In fact, the next step is to be very careful with cheat days when trying to hit a really low body fat percentage. And you'll probably want to avoid them in general. I see a lot of people making the mistake of cheating every week with things like protein cookies, low calorie ice creams, as well as other processed foods. And then they're left wondering why they can't get past a certain level of body fat. Even though cheat days can definitely help you stay on track mentally when your goal is to simply just lose some weight, and even though when done right, they can help you maintain your strength as you cut since you'll be able to eat a lot more carbohydrates and refill those muscle glycogen stores, giving you more strength, it doesn't change the fact that cheat days are not that great if you want to get to those really, really low levels of body fat. And there are a couple reasons why. First, the obvious is if you raise your calorie intake above maintenance and you don't balance it out with lower calorie days like we just talked about, you'll obviously regain some of the fat that you've already lost. It's very easy to gain the fat back, but not so easy to lose it when you're at those lower levels. Second, even though a cheat day may raise your metabolism, there's no evidence or reason to think that the already tiny increase in your metabolic rate will continue when you go back to your regular calorie deficit. That's because the increased metabolic rate that we see after someone has a cheat day is primarily due to the larger thermic effect of digesting that larger amount of food. So simply digesting more food is what will cost your body more calories and elevate your metabolism. You're not just going to continue permanently burning more calories going forward just because you had a cheat day. Third, your appetite doesn't actually decrease on the subsequent days following a cheat day or a refeed. That's why I always say that the primary benefit for most people is strictly mental, not so much physical. In fact, research shows that appetite regulation is primarily driven by body composition, not energy intake. So the amount of calories you eat on one day generally doesn't influence the hunger on the following days. Some studies have even showed that overfeeding by 60% more calories actually can increase appetite rather than decrease it. In other words, it's not very likely that you'll trick your metabolism and your hunger levels by cheating. So in the best case scenario, a cheat day will usually just pause your fat loss. However, it can also do more bad than good because if you go overboard, it'll cause you to regain some of that lost body fat. Instead of trying to boost your metabolism with cheat days, when you hit a plateau, you want to either lower your calorie intake further or increase your activity level further. You'll have to lower your energy balance in one of these two ways because your body will have already adapted to your previous calorie intake. Now, when choosing between cutting your calories further or exercising more, you should know that one is not inherently better than the other. That's because fat loss is almost entirely about energy balance. It doesn't matter if you reduce your energy balance by doing cardio or by eating less. Given the same energy balance, weight and fat loss are the same. With that said, if possible, you may want to try reducing your calorie intake first instead of adding more cardio to your workout program because it takes a lot of cardio to match the amount of calories you could burn by simply eating a little less. On top of that, cardio can impair muscle growth. This can be seen in a 2012 meta-analysis that found adding cardio to a resistance training routine reduced muscle growth effect size by 39%. This negative effect for your muscle mass is referred to as the interference effect. But even with this effect in mind, there does come a point where it becomes impossible or at least highly impractical to lower your calorie intake any further while still meeting your protein and micronutrient needs. If your calorie intake is already really low, then you'll have to increase your activity level. There's no way around it. In that case, there are two strategies that'll help you minimize the interference effect while still burning calories. First, remember that the goal of cardio for fat loss is simply to increase energy expenditure, not to improve your endurance. That's a separate goal. So program in as little cardio as you need to achieve the calorie deficit that you're aiming for. Second, the lower intensity forms of cardio, like walking, for example, contribute a lot less to this interference effect than the higher intensity forms of cardio. And third, you'll want to perform the cardio workouts as far away from your strength training workouts as possible. Research shows that this also really helps minimize the interference effect. 
However, if you by some chance have no choice but to combine the cardio and the strength training in the same workout, then save the cardio for after your weight training so you can perform at your best and lift the heaviest loads that you can. This is crucial to maintain muscle while in a calorie deficit. Finally, the fifth step that most people overlook is to ensure that you're getting enough sleep. In general, it's important to get enough sleep if you want to lose weight, but this is especially true if you want to get very lean, and there are two main reasons for this. One is that sleep deprivation suppresses appetite satiating hormones like leptin, while at the same time raising the levels of the hunger hormone ghrelin. And it definitely doesn't help that ghrelin levels are already automatically elevated when you're very lean, which means it's especially important to focus on controlling these hunger hormones while reducing your body fat percentage further and further. The second reason is because poor quality sleep prevents fat burning and stimulates muscle wasting. So even if you lose weight despite sleeping poorly, more of the pounds that you lose will be coming from muscle rather than fat. And there's lots of evidence to support this. For example, one weight loss study found that sleeping only 40 fewer minutes per day from Monday to Friday shifted the ratio of the amount of muscle to fat loss from 20% to 80%. And another study revealed that sleeping five and a half hours instead of seven and a half hours a day increased muscle loss by 60% while decreasing the weight loss in the form of fat by 55%. So bottom line, make sure that you're getting enough sleep. It's very important if you want to reach those low levels of body fat. So that about wraps it up, guys. Even though these steps may sound simple, by following them consistently for enough time, you'll be able to drop your body fat to a really low level. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon. Also, if you're looking for a done-for-you workout plan that can be done at home or in a gym and also includes a customizable meal plan that'll be based around you and your preferences, whether that be intermittent fasting, carb cycling, one meal a day, keto or vegan, whatever. We do all those plans. So click the link below in the description and head on over to my website. Between the three gyms we have in New Jersey and the online training, we've literally put thousands of people through these programs and my clients that follow the plan are losing 20 pounds or 5% of their body fat in only six short weeks. To learn more, click the link below or you can visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com.